Section 1 of Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties by Janet McKenzie Hill. Preface to the Second Edition. The favor with which the first edition of this little book has been received by those who were interested in the subjects of which it treats is eminently gratifying to both author and publishers. It has occasioned the purpose to make a second edition of the book even more complete and helpful than the first. In making the revision, wherever the text has suggested a new thought, that thought has been inserted. Under the various headings, new recipes have been added each in its proper place, and the number of illustrations has been increased from 37 to 50. A more complete table of contents has been presented, and also a list of the illustrations. The alphabetical index has been revised and made especially full and complete. Janet M. Hill, April 10, 1903. Preface to the First Edition there is positive need of more widespread knowledge of the principles of cookery. Few women know how to cook an egg or boil a potato properly, and the making of the perfect loaf of bread has long been assigned a place among the lost arts. By many women, cooking is considered at best a homely art, a necessary kind of drudgery, and the composition, if not the consumption of salads and chafing dish productions, has been restricted hitherto chiefly to that half of the race who cook to please themselves. But since women have become anxious to compete with men in any and every walk of life, they too are desirous of becoming adepts in tossing up an appetizing salad or in stirring a creamy rarebit. And yet neither a pleasing salad, especially if it is to be composed of cooked materials, nor a tempting rarebit can be evolved, save by happy accident, without an accurate knowledge of the fundamental principles that underlie all cookery. In a book of this nature and scope, the philosophy of heat at different temperatures, as it is applied in cooking, and the more scientific aspects of culinary processes, could not be dwelt upon. But while we have not overlooked the ABC of the art, our special aim has been to present our topics in such a simple and pleasing form that she who attempts the composition of the dishes described herein will not be satisfied until she has gained a deeper insight into the conditions necessary for success in the pursuit of these as well as other fascinating branches of the culinary art. Care has been exercised to meet the actual needs of those who wish to cultivate a taste for light, wholesome dishes or to cater to the vagaries of the most capricious appetites. There is nothing new under the sun, so no claim is made to absolute originality and contents. In this and similar works, the matter of necessity must consist, in the main, of old material in a new dress. Though the introduction to Part Three was originally written for this book, the substance of it was published in the December-January 1898-99 issue of the Boston Cooking School magazine. From time to time, also, a few of the recipes with minor changes have appeared in that journal. Illustrations, by means of half-tones, produced from photographs of actual dishes, were first brought out, we think, by the Century Company. In this line, however, both in the number and in the variety of the dishes prepared, the author may justly claim to have done more than any other has yet essayed. The illustrations on these pages were prepared expressly for this work, and the dishes and the photography of the same work executed under our own hand and eye. That the results, pleasing to the eye and acceptable to the taste, await those who try the confections described in this book is the sincere wish of the author. Janet M. Hill End of Section 1「Section number two of Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, 
please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kanzaki Soul. Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties by Janet Mackenzie Hill. Salads, Introduction. Our taste for salads, and in their simplest form, who is not fond of salads, is an inheritance from classic times and eastern lands. In the hot climates of the Orient, cucumbers and melons were classed among Earth's choicest productions, and a resort, ever grateful in the heat of the day, was a lodge in a garden of cucumbers. At the Passover, the Hebrews ate lettuce, chamomile, dandelion, and mint, the bitter herbs of the Paschal Feast, combined with oil and vinegar. Of the Greeks, the rich were fond of the lettuces of Smyrna, which appeared on their tables at the close of repast. In this respect, the Romans, at first, imitated the Greeks, but later came to serve lettuce with eggs as a first course and to excite the appetite. The ancient physicians valued lettuce for its narcotic virtue, and, on account of this property, Galen, the celebrated Greek physician, called it the philosopher's or wise man's herb. The older historians make frequent mention of salad plants and salads. In the biblical narrative, Moses wrote, And the children of Israel wept again and said, We remember the fish we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. In a second eclogue, Virgil represents a rustic maid, Thistilus, preparing for the reapers a salad called moritum. He wrote also a poem bearing this title, in which he describes the composition and the preparation of the dish. A modern authority says, Salads refresh without exciting and make people younger. Whether this be strictly true or not may be an open question, but certainly in the assertion a grain of truth is visible, for it is a well-known fact that salad plants are better tonics and blood purifiers than druggist compounds. There is also an old proverb, Eat onions in May, and all the year after, physicians may play. What is health but youth? Vegetables, fish, and meats left over, all may be transformed by artistic treatment into salads selectable to the eye and taste. Potatoes are subject to endless combinations. First of all in this connection, before dressing the potatoes, allow them to stand in bouillon, meat broth, or even in the liquor in which corned beef has been cooked then drain carefully before adding the oil and other seasonings. Of uncooked vegetables, cabbage lettuce, called long ago by the Greek physician Galen, the philosopher's or wise man's herb, stands at the head of salad plants. Like all uncooked vegetables, lettuce must be served fresh and crisp, and the more quickly it is grown, the more tender it will be. When dressed for the table, each leaf should glisten with oil, yet no perceptible quantity should fall to the salad bowl. Watercress, being rich in sulfurated oil, is often served without oil. Cheese or eggs combine well with cress, and such a salad, with a sandwich of coarse bread and butter, together with a cup of sparkling coffee, forms an ideal luncheon for a picnic or for the home piazza. Indeed, all the compound salads, that is, salads of many ingredients, more particularly if they are served with a cooked or mayonnaise dressing, are substantial enough for the chief dish of a hearty meal. Their digestibility depends, in large measure, on the tenderness of the different ingredients, as well as upon the freshness of the uncooked vegetables that enter into their composition. A salad has this superiority over every other production of the culinary art. A salad, but not every salad, is suitable to serve upon any occasion, or to any class or condition of men. Among bon vivants, without a new salad, no matter how recherche the other courses may be, the luncheon or dinner party of today does not pass as an unqualified success. While salads may be compounded of all kinds of delicate meats, fish, shellfish, eggs, nuts, fruit, cheeses, and vegetables, cooked or uncooked, two things are indispensable to every kind and every grade of salad, namely, the foundation of vegetables and the dressing. The dressing. Salads are dressed of oil, acid and condiments, and sometimes a sweet, as honey or sugar, is used. A perfect salad is not necessarily ascetic. The presence of vinegar in a dressing, like that of onions and its relatives, on most occasions should be suspected only. Wavern and other true epicures consider the advice of Sidney Smith as expressed in the following couplet most pernicious. Four times the spoon with oil of Luca crown, and twice with vinegar procured from town. 
Aromatic vinegars, a few drops of which, used occasionally, lend piquancy and variety to an everyday salad, can be purchased at high-class provision stores. But the true salad maker is an artist, and prefers to compound her own colors, i.e. vinegars. Therefore, we have given several recipes for the same, which may be easily modified to suit individual tastes. Indeed, the dressing of a salad, though in the early days of the century considered a special art, an art that rendered it possible for at least one noted royalist refugee to amass a considerable fortune, is entirely a matter of individual taste, or more properly speaking, of cultivation. On this account, particularly for French dressing, no set rules can be given. By experience and judgment, one must decide upon the proportions of the different ingredients, or, more specifically, upon the proportions of the oil and acid to be used. Often, four spoonfuls of oil are used to one of vinegar. Four spoonfuls of oil to two, three, or four of vinegar may be the proportion preferred by others, and the quantity may vary for his different salads. Though in many of the recipes explicit quantities of oil, vinegar, and condiments are given, it is with the understanding that these quantities are indicated simply as an approximate rule. Sometimes less and sometimes more will be required, according to the tendency of the article dressed to absorb oil and acid, or the taste of the salad dresser. Use of dressings. The dressing in most common use are the French and the mayonnaise. A French dressing is used for green vegetables, for fruit and nuts, and to marinate cooked vegetables, or the meat, or fish for a meat, or fish salad. Mayonnaise dressing is used for meat, fish, some varieties of fruit, as banana, apple, and pineapple, and for some vegetables as cauliflower, asparagus, and tomatoes. Any article to be served with mayonnaise, after standing an hour or more in a marinade, i.e. French dressing, should be carefully drained as, by the pickling process, liquid will drain out into the bottom of the vessel and mixing with the mayonnaise will liquefy the same. Arrangement of Salads in the arrangement of salads, there may be great display of taste and individuality. By judicious selection from materials that may be kept constantly in store, and with one or two window boxes in which herbs are growing, anyone with a modicum of inventive skill can so change and modify the appearance and flavor of her salads that she may seem always to present a new one. Composition of Mayonnaise Mayonnaise dressing is composed largely of olive oil. A small amount of the yolk of egg is used as a foundation. The oil, with the addition of condiments, is slightly acidulated with vinegar and lemon juice, one or both, and the whole is made very light and thick by beating. Mayonnaise forms a very handsome dressing and is much enjoyed by those who are fond of oil. Value of oil. Pure olive oil is almost entirely without flavor, and a taste for it can be readily acquired and when we consider that it contains all the really desirable qualities of the once famous cod liver oil, except the phosphates, and that these may be supplied in the other materials of the salad, it would seem wise to cultivate a taste for so wholesome an article. By the addition of cream, and the proportion of a cup of whipped cream to a pint of dressing, those to whom oil has not become agreeable can so modify its tone that they too will enjoy the mayonnaise dressing. Boiled and cream dressings. For the French and mayonnaise dressings, particularly for the latter, we sometimes substitute a boiled and sometimes a cream dressing. In the first, butter or cream is substituted for oil, and the materials are combined by cooking. In the latter, as the name implies, cream is the basis, and this may be either sweet or sour. Important points in salad making. 1. The green vegetables should be served fresh and crisp. 2. Meat and fish should be well marinated and cold. 3. The ingredients composing the salad should not be combined until the last moment before serving. When to serve salad with French or mayonnaise dressing. As a rule, subject however to exceptions, light vegetable salads dressed with French dressing are served at dinner, while heavy meat or fish salads are reserved for luncheon or supper, and are served with mayonnaise or cream dressing. When to serve a fruit salad. A fruit salad with sweet dressing is served with cake at a luncheon or supper or in the evening. That is, it may take the place of fruit in the dessert course. 
A fruit salad with French or mayonnaise dressing may be served as a first course at luncheon or with a game or roast, though in the latter case, the French dressing is preferable. Salads with cheese. The rightful place of salads is with the roast or game. Here, the crisp green salad herbs, delicately acidulated, complement and correct the richness of these plats. Occasionally, when the game is omitted and an acid sauce accompanies the roast, a simple salad combined with cheese in some form, preferably cooked and hot, is selected to lengthen the menu. The same combination of hot cheese dish and salad should be a favorite one for home luncheons when this meal is not made the children's dinner. The salad too in this combination, aided by the bread accompanying it, corrects by dilution the overconcentration and richness of the cheese dish. In England, neatly trimmed and cleansed celery stalks and cheese often precede the sweet course. But by virtue of its mission as the digester of everything but itself, and of the common disinclination to have the taste of sweets linger upon the palate, the place of cheese as cheese is with the coffee. End of section 2 Section 3 of Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties by Janet Mackenzie Hill. How to Make Aromatic Vinegars, to Keep Vegetables, and to Prepare Garnishes. How to boil eggs hard for garnishing. Cover the eggs with boiling water. Set them on the back of the range, where the water will keep hot without boiling, about 40 minutes. Cool in cold water, and with a thin, sharp knife cut as desired. To poach whites of eggs. Turn the whites of the eggs into a well-buttered mold or cup. Set upon a trivet in a dish of hot water, and cook until firm either upon the back of the range or in the oven and without letting the water boil turn from the mold cut into slices and then into fanciful shapes or chop fine royal custard for molds of aspic beat together one whole egg and three yolks add one-fourth a teaspoonful each of mace salt and paprika and when well mixed add half a cup of cream bake in a buttered mold set in a pan of water until firm when cold cut in thin slices then stamp out in fanciful shapes with french cutters use in decorating a mold for aspic jelly how to use garlic or onion in salads the salad bowl may be rubbed with the cut surface of a clove of garlic or a chapon may be used a chapon according to gastronomic usage is a thin piece of bread rubbed on all sides with the cut surface of a clove of garlic and put into the salad bowl before the seasonings it is tossed with the salad and dressings to which it imparts its flavor it may be divided and served with the salad oftentimes instead of one piece several small cubes of bread are thus used after a slice of onion has been removed the cut surface of the onion may be pressed with a rotary motion against a grater and the juice extracted or a lemon squeezer kept for this special purpose may be used how to shell and blanch chestnuts score the shell of each nut and put into a frying pan with a teaspoonful of butter for each pint of nuts shake the pan over the fire until the butter is melted then set in the oven five minutes with a sharp knife remove the shells and skins together how to blanch walnuts and almonds Put the nut meats over the fire in cold water. Bring quickly to the boiling point, drain and rinse with cold water. Then the skins may be easily rubbed from the almonds. A small pointed knife will be needed for the walnuts. How to chop fresh herbs. Pluck the leaves close, discarding the stems. Gather the leaves together closely with the fingers of the left hand. Then with a sharp knife, cut through close to the fingers push the leaves out a little and cut again and so continue until all are cut now gather into a mound and chop to a very fine powder holding the point of the knife close to the board put the chopped herb into a cheesecloth and hold under a stream of cold water then wring dry use this green powder for dusting over a salad 
when required how to cut radishes for a garnish cut a thin slice from the leaf end of each cut off the root end so as to leave it the length of the pistil of a flower with a small sharp knife score the pink skin at the root end into five or six sections extending halfway down the radish then loosen the skin above these sections put the radishes in cold water for a little time when they will become crisp and the points will stand out like the petals of a flower how to clean lettuce endive etc a short time before serving cut off the roots and freshen the vegetable in cold water then break the leaves from the stalk dip repeatedly into cold water examining carefully until perfectly clean taking care not to crush the leaves put into a french wire basket made for the purpose or into a piece of mosquito netting or cheesecloth and shake gently until the water is removed then spread on a plate or in a colander and set in a cool place until the moment for serving how to clean cress pick over the stalk so as to remove grass etc wash and dry in the same manner as the lettuce but without removing the leaves from the stems except when the stems are very coarse and large how to clean cabbage and cauliflower let stand head downwards half an hour in cold salted water using a tablespoonful of salt to a quart of water how to render uncooked vegetables crisp put into cold water with a bit of ice and a slice of lemon when ready to use dry between folds of cheesecloth and let stand exposed to the air a few moments how to blanch and cook vegetables for salads cut the vegetables as desired in cubes lozenges balls juliennes etc put over the fire in boiling water and after cooking three or four minutes drain rinse in cold water and put on to cook in boiling salted water to cover drain as soon as tender how to cut gherkins for a garnish select small cucumber pickles of uniform size with a sharp knife cut them lengthwise into slices thin as paper without detaching the slices at one end then spread out the slices as a fan is spread how to fringe celery cut the stalks into pieces about two inches in length beginning on the round side at one end with a thin sharp knife cut down half an inch as many times as possible then turn the stalk halfway around and cut in the opposite direction thus dividing the end into shreds or a fringe if desired cut the opposite end in the same manner set aside in a pan of ice water containing a slice of lemon how to shred romaine and straight lettuce wash the lettuce leaves carefully without removing them from the stalk shake in the open air and they will dry very quickly fold in the middle crosswise and cut through in the fold hold the two pieces one above the other close to the meat board with the left hand and with a sharp knife cut in narrow ribbons not more than a quarter of an inch wide how to keep celery watercress lettuce etc many green vegetables celery in particular discolor or rust if allowed to stand longer than a few hours after being wet when brought from the market they may be put aside in a tightly closed pail or in a paper bag in a cool dry place by thus excluding the air they will keep fresh several days a short time before serving put them into ice-cold water to which a slice or two of lemon has been added how to cook sweetbreads and brains remove the thin outer skin or membrane and soak in cold water changing the water often an hour or more cover with salted boiling water acidulated with lemon juice and flavored with vegetables and cook just below the boiling point twenty minutes they are then ready for preparation in any of the ways mentioned tie the brains in a cloth before cooking how to pickle nasturtium seeds as the seeds are gathered wash and dry them then put them into vinegar to which salt half a teaspoonful to a pint has been added when a sufficient quantity has been collected scald fresh vinegar add salt as before and the seeds from which the first vinegar has been drained pour scalding hot into bottles having the seeds completely covered with vinegar nasturtium vinegar fill a quart jar loosely with nasturtium blossoms fully blown add a shallot and one-third a clove of garlic 
both finely chopped half a red pepper and cold cider vinegar to fill the jar cover closely and set aside two months dissolve a teaspoonful of salt in the vinegar then strain and filter tarragon vinegar fill a fruit jar with fresh tarragon leaves or shoots putting them in loosely add the thin yellow paring of half a lemon with two or three cloves and fill the jar with white wine or cider vinegar screw down the cover tightly and allow the jar to stand in the sun two weeks strain the vinegar through a cloth pressing out the liquid from the leaves then press through filter paper and bottle for future use if a quantity be prepared it were better to seal the bottles fiend air vinegar ingredients two cups of tarragon vinegar two tablespoonfuls of garden cress chopped fine two tablespoonfuls of sweet marjoram chopped fine two cloves of garlic chopped fine four small green capsicums chopped fine two shallots chopped fine method mix the ingredients in a pint fruit jar cover closely and set in the sun after two weeks strain pass through filter paper and store in tightly corked bottles fiend air vinegar number two ingredients one pint of tarragon vinegar two tablespoonfuls of seeds of garden cress bruised or crushed two tablespoonfuls of celery seeds crushed two tablespoonfuls of parsley seeds crushed four capsicums chopped fine two cloves of garlic chopped fine method prepare as in preceding recipe to decorate salads with mayonnaise by use of pastry bag and tubes make the dressing very thick by the addition of oil or use jelly mayonnaise put the dressing into a pastry bag with star tube attached twist the large end of the bag with the left hand pressing the mixture towards the tube and with the right guide the tube as in writing to produce the pattern desired to form stars hold the bag in an upright position point downward press out a little of the dressing then push the tube down gently and raise it quickly to break the flow end of section three section four of salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill salad dressings just as in nature thy proportions be as full of concord their variety french dressing ingredients one half a teaspoonful of salt a few grains of cayenne or paprika one fourth a teaspoonful of pepper two to six tablespoonfuls of vinegar or lemon juice six tablespoonfuls of oil if desired one half a teaspoonful of prepared mustard one half a teaspoonful of onion juice or rub the salad bowl with slice of onion or clove of garlic method mix the condiments add the oil and mix again then add the acid a few drops at a time and beat until an emulsion is formed then pour over the vegetables toss with a spoon and fork and serve in chicago a method is obtained that is well worth a trial put a bit of ice into the bowl with the condiments and by means of a fork pressed against or into this use in mixing second method pour the oil over the vegetables toss until the oil is evenly distributed and dust with salt and pepper then add the acid and toss again when the salad is prepared at the table the vegetables may be dressed in a bowl then arranged on the serving dish or if but one vegetable is used it is preferable to serve from the dish in which it is dressed to mix a quantity of dressing put all the ingredients into a fruit jar fit on one or more rubbers and the cover then shake the jar vigorously until a smooth dressing is formed claret dressing for lettuce or fruit salad mix half a teaspoonful of salt a dash of pepper white or paprika and four tablespoonfuls of oil add gradually one tablespoonful of claret and one tablespoon of lemon juice or vinegar mayonnaise dressing ingredients 
the yolks of two raw eggs one pint of olive oil two tablespoonfuls of vinegar two tablespoonfuls of lemon juice one half a teaspoonful of salt a few grains of cayenne or paprika if desired one teaspoonful each of mustard and powdered sugar method an amateur will probably find it helpful to have all the utensils and ingredients thoroughly chilled but the professional salad maker thinks it's expedient to have the ingredients and utensils of the same temperature as the room in which the dressing is to be served beat the yolks with a small wooden spoon or silver fork add the condiments and mix again then add one teaspoonful of vinegar and when well mixed with the other ingredients add the oil at first drop by drop when the mixture has become of good consistency the oil may be added faster when it is too thick to beat well add a little of the lemon juice then more oil and so on alternately until the ingredients are used if a very heavy dressing is desired as when it is to be put on with forcing bag and tubes for a garnish an additional half a cup of oil may be added without increasing the quantity of acid in preparing mayonnaise there is absolutely no danger of curdling if the eggs be fresh and the oil be added slowly especially if the materials and utensils have been thoroughly chilled if the yolks do not thicken when beaten with the condiments but spread out over the bowl you have sufficient indication that they will not thicken upon the addition of the oil and it were better to select others and begin again take care to add the teaspoonful of acid to the yolks and condiments before beginning to drop in the oil as this lessens the liability of the mixture to curdle how to make mayonnaise in quantity if four quarts or more of dressing be required make the full amount at one time cut down the number of yolks to one for each pint of oil but keep the usual proportions of the other ingredients use a dover egg beater from the start after a little a teaspoonful of oil can be added instead of drops and very soon a much larger quantity curdled mayonnaise occasionally a mayonnaise will assume a curdled appearance under such circumstances often the addition of a very little of white of egg or a few drops of lemon juice with thorough beating will cause the sauce to resume its former smoothness in case it does not become smooth put the yolk of an egg into a cold bowl beat well and add to it the curdled mixture a little at a time red mayonnaise mix a level teaspoonful of italian tomato pulp with a teaspoonful of mayonnaise dressing and when well blended beat very thoroughly into a cup or more of the dressing or add dressing until the desired tint is attained red mayonnaise number two for fish pound dried lobster coral in a mortar sift and add gradually to the dressing to secure the shade desired or after the salad is arranged in the bowl or in nests mask the top with mayonnaise of the usual color and sift the coral over the centre leaving a ring of yellow around the edge sauce tartare make a mayonnaise dressing using tarragon vinegar to each cup of dressing add one shallot chopped fine two tablespoonfuls each of finely chopped capers olives and cucumber pickles one tablespoonful of chopped parsley and one-fourth a teaspoonful of powdered tarragon sardine mayonnaise skin and bone three sardines and pound them to a pulp sift the cooked yolks of three eggs and add to the pulp work until smooth then add to one cup of mayonnaise dressing jelly mayonnaise used for masking cold fish or salads or as a garnish with forcing bag and tube to a cup of mayonnaise dressing beat in gradually from two tablespoonfuls to one-third a cup of chilled but liquid aspic more seasoning may be needed apply to a cold surface or chill before using with forcing bag Livornay's sauce to a cup of mayonnaise dressing add a grating of nutmeg one tablespoonful of chopped parsley and the pulp of eight anchovies to prepare the anchovies wash dry remove skin and bones and pound to a pulp in a mortar boiled dressing for chicken salad ingredients one half a cup of chicken stock well reduced one half a cup of vinegar one quarter a cup of mixed mustard one teaspoonful of salt one half teaspoonful of paprika yolks of five eggs one half a cup of oil one half a cup of thick sweet cream 
method simmer the liquor in which a fowl has been cooked until it is well reduced put the stock vinegar and mustard into a double boiler and add the salt and pepper beat the yolks of the eggs and add carefully to the hot mixture cooking in the same manner as a boiled custard when cold and ready to serve beat in with a whisk the oil and then fold in the cream beaten stiff with a dover egg beater melted butter added before the dressing is cold may be substituted for the oil boiled salad dressing ingredients one teaspoonful of mustard one half a teaspoonful of salt one quarter a teaspoonful of paprika yolks of three eggs four tablespoonfuls of melted butter two tablespoonfuls of vinegar one half a cup of thick cream two tablespoonfuls of lemon juice method mix together the mustard salt and paprika and add the yolks of eggs stir well and add slowly the butter vinegar and lemon juice and cook in the double boiler until thick as soft custard when cool and ready to serve add the cream beaten stiff with the dover egg beater cream salad dressing ingredients three-fourths a cup of thick cream two tablespoonfuls of vinegar or lemon juice one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt a dash of white pepper and paprika method add the seasonings to the cream and beat with a dover egg beater until smooth and light add a scant fourth a cup of grated horseradish for a change the radish should be freshly grated and added to the cream after it is beaten dressing for coleslaw beat the yolks of three eggs with half a teaspoonful of made mustard a dash of pepper and one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt add one-third a cup of vinegar and two tablespoonfuls of butter and cook over hot water until slightly thickened set aside to become cold before using bacon sauce heat five tablespoonfuls of bacon fat cook in it two tablespoonfuls of flour and a dash of paprika add five tablespoonfuls of vinegar and half a cup of water stir until boiling then beat in the beaten yolks of two eggs and a little salt if necessary do not allow the sauce to boil after the eggs are added add to salad after it has become thoroughly cold good with dandelion endive chicory corn salad or lettuce hollandaise sauce beat half a cup of butter to a cream add the yolks of four eggs one at a time beating in each thoroughly add one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt a dash of paprika or cayenne and half a cup of boiling water cook over hot water until thick adding gradually the juice of half a lemon chill before using this is good especially for a fish sauce in the place of mayonnaise bernays sauce use tarragon instead of plain vinegar omit the water with the exception of one tablespoonful and the hollandaise becomes bernays sauce oil may be used in the place of butter the sauce resembles a firm mayonnaise and as it keeps its shape well is particularly adapted for garnishing with pastry bag and tube end of section four section five of salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by betty b salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill vegetable salad served with french dressing be strewed with lettuce and cool salad herbs lettuce salad wash and drain the lettuce leaves toss lightly so as to remove every drop of water sprinkle them with oil a few drops at a time tossing the leaves about with spoon and fork after each addition when each leaf glistens with oil there should be no oil in the bottom of the bowl shake over them a few drops of vinegar then dust with salt and freshly ground pepper the cutting of lettuce is considered a culinary sin but when the straight-leaved lettuce or the romaine is to be used better effects at least as far as appearance is concerned will be produced if the lettuce be cut into ribbons to do this wash the lettuce carefully without removing the leaves from the stem fold together across the centre and with a sharp thin knife cut in ribbons less than half an inch in width endive salad prepare a lettuce salad 
first rubbing over the bowl with a clove of garlic cut in halves a few sprigs of chives chopped fine are exceedingly palatable sprinkled over a lettuce endive string bean or other bean salad a few combinations dress each vegetable separately with the dressing then arrange upon the serving dish or have the salad arranged upon the serving dish and pour the dressing over all then toss together and serve about three tablespoonfuls of oil with other ingredients in accordance will be needed for one pint of vegetable one lettuce tomatoes cut in halves sprinkled with powdered tarragon and parsley or chives two lettuce molded spinach and fine chopped beets three lettuce boston baked beans and chives four lettuce and pepper grass five lettuce shredded sweet peppers or pimentos and sliced pecan nuts or almonds six lettuce tomatoes stuffed with peas or string beans cut small and chives chopped fine seven lettuce asparagus tips and sliced radishes arrange the lettuce at the edge of dish inside a ring of radishes sliced thin without removing the red skins center of asparagus tips with radish cut to resemble a flower eight lettuce shredded tomatoes and shredded green peppers nine shredded lettuce english walnuts and almonds or cooked chestnuts sliced ten lettuce neufchatel cheese and slices and shredded pimentos eleven lettuce cauliflower string beans and shredded pimentos twelve lettuce or cress artichoke slices and powdered tarragon thirteen shredded cabbage and shredded green peppers fourteen cauliflower broken into flowerets string beans cut into small pieces and beets cut in fancy shapes or chopped arrange each vegetable in a mass by itself surround with lettuce fifteen cucumbers and new onions sliced sixteen watercress diced boiled beets and olives in centre seventeen lettuce brussels sprouts and chopped pepper lentil salad soak the lentils overnight wash and rinse thoroughly then cook until tender adding hot water as needed drain and when cold mix with each pint of lentils about five tablespoonfuls of oil two tablespoonfuls of tarragon vinegar and one teaspoonful each of capers parsley chives and cucumber pickles all save the capers chopped fine serve in a mound on a bed of lettuce leaves garnish with heart leaves of lettuce at the top and sections of tomato or diamonds of tomato jelly at the base white bean salad toss one pint of white beans cooked with one tablespoonful of vinegar and three tablespoonfuls of oil a little salt and a dash of cayenne or paprika arrange in a mound on a bed of shredded lettuce and sprinkle with chives parsley and pimentos all finely chopped finish the top of the salad with a large pimola potato salad miss cohen ingredients three cups of cold boiled potatoes cut in cubes one cup of pecan nuts broken in pieces five tablespoonfuls of oil one tablespoonful of salt one half a teaspoonful of onion juice a dash of cayenne two or three tablespoons full of vinegar watercress method mix the potatoes and nuts add the oil and mix again add the other seasonings and when well mixed set aside in a cool place an hour or more remove the coarse stalks from two bunches of watercress that have been well washed and dried season with french dressing and arrange in a wreath about the edge of the salad potato salad carry m dearborn ingredients twelve cold boiled potatoes four cooked eggs two small bermuda onions chopped parsley one saltspoonful of white pepper two teaspoonfuls of salt six tablespoonfuls each of oil and vinegar one half a teaspoonful of powdered sugar method cut the potatoes into dice and chop the eggs fine chop the onions or slice them very thin sprinkle the potatoes eggs and onions with the salt and pepper and mix thoroughly pour the oil gradually over the mixture stirring and tossing continually lastly mix with the other ingredients the vinegar in which the sugar has been dissolved sprinkle chopped parsley over the top potato salad 
ingredients one quart of cubes of cold boiled potatoes one and one half teaspoonfuls of salt one fourth a teaspoonful of paprika three tablespoonfuls of vinegar four tablespoonfuls of oil capers beets whites and yolks of eggs and lettuce method to the potato cubes add the salt pepper and oil and mix thoroughly add the vinegar and mix again pile the cubes in a mound in the salad bowl mark out the surface of the mound into quarters with capers fill in two opposite sections with chopped beet use chopped whites of eggs in a third and sifted yolks of eggs in the fourth section finish with a border of parsley potato and nasturtium salad e j mckenzie ingredients one quarter potatoes cut in cubes one half a cup of chopped gherkins one cup of tender nasturtium shoots cut in bits two tablespoonfuls of pickled nasturtium seeds onion juice or garlic six tablespoonfuls of oil five tablespoonfuls of vinegar salt and pepper chopped parsley method mix the potatoes gherkins nasturtium shoots and seeds in a bowl rubbed over with garlic add the oil vinegar and seasonings and mix again pile in a mound on a serving dish dust with chopped parsley and garnish with a wreath of nasturtium blossoms and leaves stuffed beets boil new beets of even size until tender set aside for some hours or overnight covered with vinegar when ready to serve rub off the skin scoop out the centre of each to form a cup and arrange the cups on lettuce leaves for each five cups chop fine a cucumber make a french dressing of two tablespoonfuls of oil half a tablespoonful scant of vinegar one-fourth a teaspoonful each of paprika and salt stir the dressing into the cucumber and fill the beets with the mixture of the beet removed to form the cups cut slices and stamp out from these stars or other fanciful shapes and use to decorate the top of each cup chopped radish cress olives or celery are all admissible for a filling salad of brussels sprouts and beets soak the sprouts in salted water then drain and cook in salted boiling water about fifteen minutes or until tender drain and cool dress with french dressing and pile in a mound finish the top with a fanciful shaped figure cut from a slice of pickled beet and place a wreath of cooked beet chopped and seasoned with french dressing about the whole macedoine salad cut pieces of carrot and turnip one inch long and half an inch thick put over the fire in boiling water and bring quickly to the boiling point drain cover with fresh water and cook until tender score the top of each piece and insert an asparagus point dip the pieces in a little melted gelatin and set alternately in a circle on the serving dish have carrots cut in small cubes or straws turnips and beetroot the same green string beans cut in small pieces asparagus and peas all cooked separately until tender mix with french dressing and dispose inside the circle each vegetable may be masked by itself or all may be mixed together finish the top with half a dozen short stalks of asparagus tomato and onion salad peel and shred four tomatoes slice thinly a very mild onion and separate into rings dress freely with oil and tarragon vinegar and season with salt and pepper serve on lettuce leaves sprinkling the whole with fine chopped parsley and green peppers endive tomato and green string bean salad dress the well blanched stalks of a head of endive three tomatoes peeled cut in halves and chilled and a cup of cold cooked string beans separately with french dressing using in the dressing tarragon vinegar and a few drops of onion juice then arrange on a serving dish cucumber salad german style pare large cucumbers and cut them into thin slices cut each slice round and round so as to form a long narrow curling strip let these strips stand two hours in salted ice water drain and dry in a soft cloth serve with french dressing toss first in the oil then add the condiments and lastly the vinegar americans would prefer to omit the salt from the ice water as it softens the cucumber cucumber salad for fish course with a handy slicer remove the outside rind from the cucumbers cut in thin slices and let stand in ice water to chill wipe dry and arrange the slices in the salad bowl 
in the form of a greek cross make a french dressing in the proportion of three tablespoonfuls of cider vinegar to six tablespoonfuls of oil half a teaspoonful of salt and a dash of paprika rub the inside of the salad bowl with the cut side of an onion before the salad is disposed in it cooked vegetable salad dress cooked kidney beans peas and balls cut from potatoes each separately with french dressing to which a few drops of onion juice have been added dispose upon a serving dish and let stand in a cool place an hour or more garnish at serving with heart leaves of lettuce potato salad german style ingredients one quart of potato slices or cubes about one half a cup of beef broth one teaspoonful of salt one half a teaspoonful of paprika eight tablespoonfuls of oil one tablespoonful of grated onion two hard-boiled eggs four tablespoonfuls of vinegar one teaspoonful of mustard one teaspoonful of sugar fine chopped parsley one cup of mushrooms method boil the potatoes without paring german potatoes which are waxy rather than mealy may be procured in large cities especially for salads peel the potatoes and cut them while hot into slices or cubes pour over them as much beef broth as they will readily absorb and sprinkle with the salt and pepper the oil and onion mix lightly and set aside for some hours then add the whites of the eggs chopped fine the yolks passed through a sieve and mix with the rest of the oil stirred with the vinegar into the mustard and sugar after disposing in the dish sprinkle with the parsley if mushrooms be at hand simmer ten or fifteen minutes in broth break in pieces and add to the salad with the egg end of section five Section 6 of Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Vittoria Khan. Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties by Janet Mackenzie Hill. Chapter 6 salads largely vegetable served with mayonnaise cream or boiled dressing cauliflower salad soak the cauliflower in salted water an hour cook in boiled salted water until tender drain and chill then sprinkle with french dressing and set aside for half an hour sever the flowerets partly from the stalk but so as not to change their relative positions, and place on a serving dish. Put heart leaves of lettuce between the flowerets and about the base of the vegetable. Pour a cup of mayonnaise dressing over the whole, and sprinkle with pimentos or fine chopped parsley. In serving, separate the flowerets with a sharp knife. Tomatoes stuffed with nuts and celery peel the tomatoes cut out a circular piece at the stem end of each and scoop out the flesh so as to form cups chill thoroughly then fill with english walnut or pecan meats broken into pieces and celery cut into small pieces and mixed with mayonnaise serve on lettuce leaves stuffed tomato salad ingredients six smooth small-sized tomatoes six tablespoonfuls of chicken veal or tongue cut fine six tablespoonfuls of peas three olives chopped fine three gherkins chopped fine two tablespoonfuls of capers salt and pepper mayonnaise dressing method remove a round piece from the stem end of the tomatoes and scoop out the seeds and center chill thoroughly when ready to serve mix together the solid part removed from the tomatoes cut fine and the other ingredients season to taste with salt and pepper adding also mayonnaise to hold the mixture together with this fill the tomatoes put them in nests of lettuce or cress 
and force a star of mayonnaise on the top of each tomato tomato salad horseradish dressing plunge the tomatoes placed in a wire basket into a kettle of hot water remove at once and rub off the skin chill thoroughly and cut in halves serve on lettuce leaves with a star of cream dressing seasoned with grated horseradish on the top of each slice tomato and sweetbread salad cook two sweetbreads as directed on another page or braise with vegetables cool between two plates bearing a weight when cold cut into slices and stamp into rounds of suitable size to use with slices of tomato cover the slices of sweetbread with a chaud froid sauce and decorate with fine chopped parsley or sifted yolk of egg pour over a little melted aspic when the aspic is set trim neatly and arrange each round of sweetbread on a slice of chilled tomato serve inside a border of lettuce around a salad made of the trimmings of the sweetbreads and a cucumber cut in cubes and dressed with mayonnaise cress cucumber and tomato salad wash the cress and shake dry arrange as a bed on a serving dish discarding the coarse stems above this make a smaller bed of cucumbers cut in slices or dice and dressed with french dressing using three tablespoonfuls of oil and one of vinegar or lemon juice to a pint of cucumber arrange peeled tomatoes chilled and cut in pieces upon the cucumbers serve with french cream or mayonnaise dressing tomatoes stuffed with cucumber peel five tomatoes cut off the stem ends and scoop out the pulp thus forming cups set turned upside down in a cool place chop fine the solid pulp from the tomatoes and one cucumber chilled before chopping stir into a cup of cream dressing and fill the tomatoes with the mixture salt and pepper will be needed in addition to that in the dressing if at hand a pimento may be chopped with the other ingredients or two tablespoonfuls of grated horseradish may be used serve at once on lettuce leaves tomatoes stuffed with jelly chop one sweetbread and one cucumber fine to each cup solid and liquid add one-fourth a teaspoonful each of salt and paprika a few drops of onion juice and a tablespoonful of capers add also half a tablespoonful of granulated gelatin soaked in two or three tablespoonfuls of cold water and melted over hot water stir until the mixture begins to congeal then fill into tomatoes prepared as above set aside on the ice for half an hour at least then serve on lettuce leaves with either mayonnaise boiled or cream dressing calves brains chicken veal tongue or ham may be substituted for the sweetbread tomatoes farces a la speak ingredients six even sized ripe tomatoes one pint of aspic jelly one half a cup of lobster meat chopped fine one tablespoonful of capers two yolks of hard-boiled eggs mayonnaise parsley lettuce method scoop out the centers of the tomatoes after removing the skin and chill thoroughly pass the yolks through a sieve add to the lobster with the capers half a cup of mayonnaise and half a cup of chicken aspic thick and cold but not set stir these in a dish standing in ice water until nearly set then fill the cavities in the tomatoes with the mixture brush over the outside of the tomatoes with half set aspic when the aspic is set repeat twice then set aside on ice for some time before serving serve on a bed of lettuce seasoned with french dressing garnish each tomato with a sprig of parsley and the salad dish with blocks of aspic anchovies or any cooked fish may be substituted for the lobster serve with mayonnaise tomato jelly 
soak three-fourths a box of gelatin in half a cup of cold water cook a can of tomatoes half an onion a stalk of celery a bay leaf two cloves a teaspoonful of salt and a dash of paprika ten minutes add two tablespoonfuls of tarragon vinegar and the gelatin stir till dissolved strain and mold in a ring mold when cold turn from the mold and fill the center with celery and nut salad cut fine tender stalks of celery and english walnuts and mix with french dressing garnish the center of the salad and the border of the jelly with tender leaves of lettuce and bits of curled celery tomato jelly salad number two make the jelly and mold as before fill in the center of the ring with shredded cabbage pimentos and pecan nuts mixed with boiled dressing tomato jelly with string beans cook tiny string beans until tender in boiling salted water season while well hot with onion juice and salt pepper and tarragon vinegar when cold add oil and toss the beans about until each bean is coated with the oil fill the center of the jelly fashioned in a ring mold with the beans and sprinkle over them a fine chopped pimento garnish with lettuce leaves fine chopped chives may be used in place of the onion juice they are particularly appropriate in any bean salad if the beans are large cut in halves lengthwise and the halves crosswise tomato jelly may be served in a ring mold with turkey oyster plain chicken french chicken and other salads the oysters should be scalded and drained then marinated with french dressing chicken and turkey should also be marinated before mixing with celery and the mayonnaise or boiled dressing tomato and artichoke salad Mrs. E. M. Lucas in Boston Cooking School Magazine Choose medium-sized tomatoes, firm and smooth-skinned. Peel them, cut a slice from the stem end, and remove the seeds with a small spoon. Sprinkle the interior of these cups with salt and set on ice. When ready to serve, wipe them dry and fill with artichokes cut into dice and mixed with mayonnaise. Serve on lettuce leaves use tarragon vinegar in preparing the dressing cook the artichoke hearts until just tender no longer in salted boiling water then drain and cool artichoke salad for game mrs e m lucas in boston cooking school magazine peel three oranges remove the pith and white skin and slice lengthwise Use an equal amount of tender blanched celery stalks cut into inch lengths. Mix together lightly with two tablespoonfuls of olive oil, one tablespoonful of lemon juice, half a teaspoonful of salt, and a quarter a teaspoonful of paprika. Heap together lightly on a serving dish and surround with cooked hearts of artichokes cut into quarters. Wreathe with blanched celery leaves artichoke salad used as a border for shrimp lobster chicken and other salads mrs e m lucas in boston cooking school magazine cut boiled artichokes into quarter inch slices and stamp out with a french vegetable cutter to half a pint add one tablespoonful of olive oil half a tablespoonful of tarragon vinegar and one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt toss lightly together and let stand one hour drain and arrange as a border with an outer layer of tiny blanched lettuce leaves two scoop out the centers of the artichokes and fill with mayonnaise or with ravigot tartare or tyrolienne sauce serve on lettuce leaves as a border to a meat or fish salad three fill the centers with walnut meats sliced or tender celery stalks cut fine and mixed with mayonnaise asparagus salad cut cold cooked asparagus into pieces an inch long mix lightly with cream dressing and serve in individual portions 
on curly lettuce leaves. Asparagus and Salmon Salad Mix cold cooked salmon with mayonnaise. Form in a mound and encircle with a wreath of cold cooked asparagus tips dressed with French dressing. Asparagus and Cauliflower Salad Break the cooked cauliflower into its flowerets. Dispose in the center of the serving dish and surround with a wreath of cooked asparagus tips. Pour over the whole a mayonnaise, a boiled or a cream dressing, and sprinkle with chopped capers or pimentos. Salad of Turnips with Asparagus Tips Cook the turnips in boiling salted water until tender. Drain and cut out the centers, forming cups. Sprinkle the inside with oil and a few grains of salt, and, when the oil is absorbed, pour over the cups a little lemon juice or vinegar. Set aside to become cool. When ready to serve, arrange the cups on shredded lettuce and fill with cooked asparagus tips, cold, and mixed with mayonnaise or French dressing as desired. Peas, flagioles, or wax beans, cut fine, may be used instead of the asparagus. Garnish with radishes. Green Pea Salad Mix the peas with a cream dressing. Serve in nests of lettuce. Garnish the top of each nest with a little chopped beet or a fanciful figure cut from a pickled beet or pimento. Green Pea and Potato Salad Mix equal parts of cold cooked peas and potatoes cut in very small cubes. Season with salt and pepper and serve as green pea salad. Asparagus Salad Scrape the scales from the stalks and cook, standing upright in boiling salted water, until tender. Drain and chill thoroughly. Serve on lettuce leaves with French dressing. Garnish the lettuce with hard-boiled eggs cut in quarters lengthwise. Macedoine of Vegetable Salad Dress one cup each of cooked carrots and turnips cut in dice, string beans cut small, green peas, and half a cup of cooked beets cut small, with French dressing. Add two tablespoonfuls of chopped gherkins. Drain and mix with sufficient jelly mayonnaise to hold the vegetables together. Arrange in dome shape and cover with more jelly mayonnaise. Set a row of sliced gherkins near the top and fill in the space to the top with string beans or asparagus tips. Surround the base with alternate rounds of beet and potato overlapping one another. Decorate the space above with slices of potato and beet cut in diamonds and surround the base with light green aspic cut in diamonds. One pint of aspic will be sufficient. Use chicken stock and tint with color paste. Russian Vegetable Salad Select two molds of suitable shape and size, tin basins or earthen bowls will do, and chill in ice water. Have ready cooked balls cut from carrots and turnips and cooked string beans and cauliflower, all marinated with French dressing. Drain the vegetables, dip them into half-set aspic, and arrange against the chilled sides of the molds. Then fill the molds with aspic jelly. When set, with a hot spoon scoop out the aspic from the center of each mold and fill in the space with a mixture of the vegetables and jelly mayonnaise, leaving an open space at the top to be filled with half-set aspic. When thoroughly chilled and set, turn from the molds the smaller mold above the other. Garnish with flowerets of cauliflower, dipped in aspic and chilled, and lettuce. Serve with mayonnaise. Stuffed Cucumber Salad Pare a short cucumber and cut it lengthwise in two parts. Remove the seeds and let chill in ice water for an hour. Chop together the solid part of a peeled and seeded tomato, half a slice of new onion, a stalk of celery, and a sprig of parsley. Mix with mayonnaise or a boiled dressing and use as a filling for the well-dried halves of cucumber. Serve on cress or lettuce. Cowslip and cream cheese salad. 
cook the cowslip leaves until tender in boiling salted water reserving a few choice leaves with blossoms for a garnish chop fine season to taste with salt and paprika press into a mold and set aside to become chilled slice chilled cream cheese neufchatel or cottage in uniform slices and arrange at the sides of the mound serve with french or mayonnaise dressing cauliflower salad egg garnish separate a cauliflower into flowerets and boil in salted water until tender not longer drain carefully season with oil vinegar salt pepper and a sprinkling of chopped tarragon leaves or use tarragon vinegar arrange symmetrically in an earthen bowl having the upper surface level let stand to become thoroughly chilled then turn on to a serving dish the shape of the mold will be retained cover with mayonnaise dressing or sauce tartare and surround with lengthwise quarters of hard-boiled eggs potato salad with mayonnaise boil the potatoes and let cool without paring then remove the skins and cut into slices balls or cubes squeeze over them a little onion juice sprinkle with fine chopped parsley and let stand in a french dressing several hours mix the dressing after the usual formula and use enough to moisten well the potato when ready to serve make nests of heart leaves of lettuce put a spoonful of the potato in each with a teaspoonful of mayonnaise above sprinkle the mayonnaise with capers and press the quarter of a hard-boiled egg into the top of the mayonnaise or add the chopped white of egg to the potato before marinating and sift the yolk over the mayonnaise end of chapter six recording by vittoria khan Section 7 of Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. Salads, Sandwiches, and Chafing Dish Dainties by Janet Mackenzie Hill. Fish Salads. Ever and justly, fish have taken high rank in the list of salad ingredients no wonder when we consider that nothing excels in delicacy of flavor many a variety of fish and while fish are not necessarily expensive in any locality in many sections of the country their cost is merely nominal then too salad making appeals largely to one's artistic nature and the products of sea and fresh water are constantly furnishing opportunities for studies in many and varied shades of color the lobster's vivid red the brilliant tints of the salmon and red snapper the delicate pink of shrimps the dull white of scallops and halibut and the bluish gray of mackerel and bluefish each in its own season may be made to contrast most effectively with fresh green herbs and yellow dressings oysters scallops and little neck clams are frequently served in salads without cooking these should be carefully washed then drained and set aside in a marinade for an hour when cooked they should be heated to the boiling point in their own liquor then drained and cut in halves the adductor muscle of the oyster the white button-shaped part that connects the animal with its shell is often discarded other fish than shellfish when used in salads are boiled broiled or baked they present the best appearance however when boiled thudicum recommends sea water whenever it is available for boiling fish lacking this hot water salted an ounce of salt to a quart of water and acidulated pleasantly with lemon juice or vinegar is the proper medium of cooking the addition of a slice or two of onion and carrot a sprig of parsley a stalk of celery with aromatic herbs or spices provided they be not used so freely as to overpower the delicate savor of the fish is thought to improve the dish the quantity of water should be adjusted to the size of the fish in no case should it be larger than will suffice to produce the desired result at the moment the fish is immersed in the water 
the temperature should be at the boiling point and thereafter the vessel should be permitted to simmer during the process of cooking the fish may be cooked whole or cut into small pieces similar in shape and size in the latter case a wire basket is of service as by this means the fish may be easily removed from the water and drained if the fish is to be served whole remove the skin and fins and when thoroughly cold mask with jelly mayonnaise or with a fancy butter after chilling again the mask may be decorated with capers olives eggs etc if the fish is to be used in flakes the flakes will separate more easily while the fish is still hot in marinating fish let the proportions of oil and acid vary with the kind of fish i e according to the oily nature of the flesh recipes brook trout salad dress the trout without removing the heads boil as previously indicated remove the backbone without destroying the shape of the fish serve thoroughly chilled on crisp lettuce leaves dressed with claret or french dressing prepare the latter with tarragon vinegar brook trout moulded in aspic pour a little chicken aspic into a pickle or other dish of suitable shape and size for a single fish when nearly set lay a trout prepared as above upon the aspic add a few spoonfuls of aspic let it harden so that the fish may become fixed in place then add aspic to cover slices of cucumber pickles capers or other ornaments may be used when the aspic is thoroughly set and chilled remove from the mould and serve on two lettuce leaves with any dressing desired halibut salad flake the fish and marinate with french dressing three tablespoonfuls of oil one tablespoonful of lemon juice or vinegar a dash of salt and pepper for each pint of fish drain and add half as much boiled potato cut in small cubes and dressed with french dressing serve on a bed of lettuce leaves garnish with sardine dressing shredded lettuce or peas may be used in place of the potato halibut and cucumber salad ingredients one pound of cooked halibut two tablespoonfuls of oil one tablespoonful of lemon juice a few drops of onion juice salt and pepper two pimentos lettuce cucumbers french dressing method flake one pound of cooked halibut while hot and marinate with the oil lemon juice onion juice salt and pepper when cold drain and mix with the pimentos shredded after cutting from the same a few star-shaped or other fanciful figures arrange heart leaves of lettuce in an upright position in the centre of a serving dish the fish and pimentos around the lettuce and around these one large or two small cucumbers cut in small cubes and mixed with french dressing with salmon use capers instead of pimentos use enough dressing to moisten the cucumbers thoroughly halibut salad steam a thick slice of chicken halibut until the flesh separates easily from the bone remove the skin and bones without disturbing the shape of the fish marinate while hot with three tablespoonfuls of oil one tablespoonful of vinegar or lemon juice and salt and pepper when cold put the fish on a serving dish and using endive or boston market lettuce put the ends of the leaves beneath the fish so that the tops of the leaves will fall over upon the fish garnish the top with stars of mayonnaise between the leaves dispose sliced pimolas and fans cut from small gherkins serve mayonnaise with the salad fillets of halibut in aspic with cucumber and radish salad ingredients two slices of halibut cut half an inch or less in thickness one lobster a pound and a half three tablespoonfuls of butter one fourth a cup of flour one fourth a cup of cream one fourth a cup of stock a dash of paprika one tablespoonful of lemon juice one teaspoonful of chopped parsley one fourth a tablespoonful of salt a quart of aspic olives a bunch of radishes two cucumbers french dressing method remove the skin and bone from the halibut thus securing eight fillets season with salt pepper onion and lemon juice chop the lobster meat fine melt the butter cook in it the flour and seasonings add the cream and lobster stock and when cooked stir in the chopped lobster when cool spread upon one side of the fillets roll up the fillets and fasten with wooden toothpicks that have been dipped in melted butter 
bake on a fish sheet about fifteen minutes basting with butter melted in hot water set a plain border mold in ice water decorate the bottom and sides with pimolas or gherkins cut in slices and dipped in half-set aspic cover the decoration on the bottom with aspic and when set and the decorations on the side are fixed in place arrange on the aspic the cold fillets of fish and fill the mold with more aspic when cold turn from the mold and fill the centre with diced cucumbers and sliced radishes dressed with french dressing pass mayonnaise or french dressing in a separate dish surround the aspic with shredded lettuce if desired fillets of halibut in aspic with coleslaw use a generous half pint of oysters in the place of the lobster parboiling and draining before chopping and fill in the centre of the aspic with coleslaw mirotan of fish and potato marinate one pint of cold cooked fish salmon cod haddock halibut etc with three or four tablespoonfuls of oil half a teaspoonful of salt a dash of pepper and two tablespoonfuls of lemon juice marinate separately one pint of cold potatoes cooked in their skins and cut in cubes with the same quantity of dressing adding also one teaspoonful of onion juice let stand in a cool place one hour or more have ready six hard-boiled eggs cut a thin slice from the round end of each egg that it may stand upright then cut in quarters lengthwise dip into a little aspic jelly or melted gelatin and arrange the quarters in the form of a circle with the yolks outside toss together the fish potato and three tablespoonfuls of capers and fill in the centre of the circle dust with fine chopped parsley or beets add a tuft of lettuce at the top and a few heart leaves of lettuce above the crown of eggs fish salad molded in aspic cover the bottom of a mould with aspic to the depth of one-fourth an inch set the mould in ice water and when the aspic is set arrange upon it a decoration of cooked vegetables cut in shapes with french cutter or fashion a conventional design or some flower dogwood blossoms provide a simple pattern and one easily carried out cut the four petals from a thin slice of cooked turnip and the centre of the blossom from carrot or lemon peel fasten each piece in place with liquid jelly and when set cover with more jelly to decorate the sides of the mould take the figures on the point of a skewer dip in jelly then set in position against the chilled sides of the mould and they will remain in place after the jelly covering the figures on the bottom of the mould has set place a smaller mould in the centre of the aspic in the first and fill this with ice and water pour in aspic to fill the space about the smaller mould and when this aspic is firm dip out the water and ice fill with warm water and quickly remove the mould separate a pound of cooked fish into flakes add half a cup of cold cooked peas three or four gherkins cut very fine and three tablespoonfuls of capers mix together and then mix with one cup of mayonnaise made with jelly with this fill the vacant space in the mould when ready to serve dip the mould very quickly in warm water letting the water rise to the top of the mould and invert over a serving dish remove the mould and garnish with lettuce tiny gherkins cut to resemble fans blocks of aspic or aspic molded in shells and mayonnaise fish salad molded in aspic number two decorate the mold as before then put in a layer of the fish and dressing when set add a layer of aspic alternate the layers until the materials are used or the mold is filled individual molds may be prepared in the same way salad of mackerel or bluefish separate a cooked fish into flakes and mix with the chopped whites and sifted yolks of three hard-boiled eggs season with french dressing mix lightly and turn on to a bed of lettuce or cress also seasoned with the dressing garnish with fans cut from small gherkins or with pickled beet cut in fanciful shape or chopped salad of salt mackerel freshen the fish carefully before cooking use equal parts of fish flaked and cold boiled potatoes if potatoes are specially prepared for the purpose cut them in cubes or balls blanch and cook in well seasoned beef stock drain and add when cold to the fish season with french dressing arrange on a bed of cress and sift the yolk of an egg over the whole 
salad of shad roe and cucumber cook two shad roes with an onion sliced and a bay leaf in salted acidulated water twenty minutes drain and marinate with about two tablespoonfuls of oil one tablespoonful of lemon juice and a dash of pepper and salt when cold cut in small cubes rub the salad bowl with a clove of garlic cut in halves cut a thoroughly chilled cucumber in dice put the cucumber on a bed of lettuce leaves in the bottom of the bowl and the roe well drained above mask with mayonnaise merely a cup will be required in the top insert a few heart leaves of lettuce and place around the center of the mound a circle of cucumber slices overlapping one another or alternate these with lozenges cut from pickled beet boudin de saumon salad butter four small dariole moulds or small cups sprinkle the butter with chopped parsley select four small pieces of cooked salmon dry on a soft cloth so as to remove all oily liquor and put a piece in each mould beat two eggs or better one egg in the yolks of two slightly season with one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt a dash of paprika and a few drops of anchovy essence or onion sauce add half a cup of milk and when well mixed pour into the moulds around the fish set the moulds in a pan of hot water and bake until the custard is set do not let the water boil chill thoroughly then turn from the moulds on to lettuce leaves serve with a star of mayonnaise dressing on the top of each boudin russian salad boston cooking school ingredients one cup of carrots one cup of potatoes one cup of peas one cup of beans flageolet preferred six tablespoonfuls of oil three tablespoonfuls of vinegar one teaspoonful of salt one fourth a teaspoonful of pepper a head of lettuce one cup of mayonnaise one cup of shrimps one quarter a pound of smoked salmon one hard-boiled egg method marinate the carrots and potatoes cut in small pieces also the peas and beans with french dressing arrange on a dish in four sections having lettuce for the foundation of each cover each vegetable with mayonnaise strew the tops of two sections with small pieces of smoked salmon on a third section strew the sifted yolk of the egg and on the fourth the white of the egg cut rather coarsely outline the inner side of each section with shrimps by lightly pressing the ends of the shrimp into the mayonnaise finish with a tuft of lettuce in the centre of the dish spanish salad in the centre of a flat serving dish arrange a mound of endive peel tomatoes divide into sections or cut in slices and arrange these around the endive shell cold hard-boiled eggs cut in halves crosswise and in points remove the yolks and pound to a paste with an equal amount of the flesh of lobster shrimp anchovies or salmon with this paste season to taste with oil lemon juice salt and pepper fill the cups fashioned from the whites of the eggs and arrange them around the tomatoes strew chopped shallot and sweet pepper over the endive mix equal portions of oil and vinegar add salt and pepper to taste and pour over the salad serve at once salmon salad for evening company or fish course at a dinner party ingredients hard-boiled eggs one teaspoonful of gelatin softened in one tablespoonful of cold water one pint of string beans or asparagus tips one pint of cooked peas french dressing two slices of salmon two inches thick jelly mayonnaise or fancy butter capers method cut the eggs into halves lengthwise cut a thin slice from the round ends that the pieces may be set upright dip lightly in the gelatin dissolved over hot water and arrange miraton fashion around an oval serving dish set aside that the eggs may become fixed in position marinate the vegetables separately with french dressing cook the salmon by the directions previously given remove the skin and cover the sides with jelly mayonnaise or fancy butter when cold decorate with whites of eggs and capers use the trimmings from the eggs and fix them in place by dipping in jelly mayonnaise set aside for the decorations to become fixed drain the vegetables and arrange inside the border higher in the centre lay the decorated slices of fish upon opposite sides of the mound and serve either with or without mayonnaise halibut salad 
for evening company or fish course at a dinner party ingredients a slice of chicken halibut three inches thick three cups of cooked peas french dressing hard-boiled eggs three slices of pickled beet one teaspoonful of gelatin jelly mayonnaise or green butter heart leaves of lettuce two olives method prepare the eggs and fasten to the plate as in salmon salad dip diamond-shaped pieces of pickled beet in the dissolved gelatin and place upon the front and top of each half of egg spread the edge of the fish after removing the skin with jelly mayonnaise or green butter and when set decorate with figures cut from the cooked white of an egg with forcing bag and tube shape a pattern around the upper edge of the fish place the fish in the centre of the crown or miraton of eggs with the peas seasoned with french dressing around it cover the place from which the bone was taken with the centre of a head of lettuce cut in halves and two fine olives serve with a bowl of mayonnaise end of section seven section eight of salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b salads sandwiches and chafing dish dainties by janet mackenzie hill fish salads part two shells of fish and mushrooms cut cold fish salmon halibut lobster etc into small cubes mix with one-third in measure of cooked mushrooms also cut small and add for each cup of mushrooms and fish one tablespoonful of gherkins cut fine season with french dressing and let stand one hour then drain and mix with jellied mayonnaise fill chilled shells with this preparation rounding it on the top make smooth and mask with jellied mayonnaise decorate with gherkins and the white of a hard-boiled egg cut in fanciful shapes and with stars of mayonnaise oysters in aspic jelly parboil drain cool and wipe dry one quart of oysters make a pint of mayonnaise sauce with aspic jelly and coat the well-dried oysters with the sauce prepare a quart of chicken aspic dip in half-set aspic the white of egg poached and cut in fanciful shapes and small gherkins cut in thin slices and decorate the bottom and sides of a charlotte or cylindrical mould standing in ice water pour in jelly to the depth of half an inch when set arrange the oysters on it in a circle one overlapping another pour in more jelly and when set dispose upon it another circle of oysters continue this order until the mould is filled when removed from the mould garnish with chopped aspic and fans cut from gherkins and lettuce serve with the remainder of the pint of mayonnaise oyster and celery salad parboil the oysters heating them to the boiling point in their own liquor drain and if large have each marinate with a french dressing i e toss the bits of oyster in oil enough to coat them nicely then toss them in a little lemon juice dust with salt and pepper and set aside to become thoroughly chilled when ready to serve drain again and add about one-third as much in bulk of fine chopped celery and one or two tablespoonfuls of pickled nasturtium seeds or capers then mix with mayonnaise or a boiled dressing serve on a bed of lettuce leaves cabbage sliced as for slaw may be used in the place of celery garnish with small pickles cut in thin slices and spread to resemble a fan oyster and sweetbread salad cut a pair of cold cooked sweetbreads into cubes parboil one pint of oysters drain cool and cut in halves marinate the sweetbreads and oysters with french dressing and allow them to stand at least half an hour drain mix with mayonnaise and serve on a bed of lettuce or cress or surround with a circle of chopped cucumbers seasoned with french dressing shrimp salad in cucumber boats pare the cucumbers which should be rather short and cut them in halves lengthwise remove the seeds and steam until tender chill and arrange on lettuce leaves or on a bed of watercress clean and marinate the shrimps if large divide into two or three pieces mix with mayonnaise and place in the cucumbers decorate with stars of mayonnaise and whole shrimps 
shrimp salad with aspic border set a border mold in ice water dip hard-boiled eggs cut in halves lengthwise and trim to fit the mold in aspic jelly and press against the sides of the mold alternately with small vegetable balls or peas dipped in half-set aspic fill gradually the empty space in the mold with partly cooled jelly adding vegetables here and there if desired dip in hot water and turn from the mold fill in the centre with lettuce torn in pieces and one pint of shrimps broken in pieces and dressed with french dressing smooth the mound and mask with jelly mayonnaise decorate with shrimps and small heart leaves of lettuce shrimp salad with aspic border number two decorate the sides of a ring mold chilled with hard-boiled eggs cut in halves alternated with hearts of lettuce cut in halves dip the egg and lettuce in half-set aspic and they will adhere to the sides of the mold then proceed as above shrimp salad take the shrimps from the shells reserve the most perfect for garnishing and break the others into pieces marinate with french dressing when ready to serve drain and mix with shredded lettuce or celery cut fine and mayonnaise shape in a mound on a bed of lettuce leaves and mask with mayonnaise use capers or olives chopped very fine to mark out five or six designs on the mound a scroll effect is always pretty fill in the designs with shrimps and the rest of the mound with capers sifted yolks or chopped whites of cooked eggs or fill the designs with the capers or eggs and the rest of the mound with shrimps finish with a tuft of lettuce at the top scallop salad soak the scallops in salted water a tablespoonful of salt to a quart of water one hour rinse in cold water cover with boiling water and let simmer five or six minutes rinse again in cold water drain and when cold cut into slices cut white stalks of celery into small pieces mix the celery and scallops half as much celery as scallops with mayonnaise or boiled dressing and shape in a mound mask the mound with a thin coating of mayonnaise with large sized capers outline a design on each of the four sides of the mound fill these with whites of eggs cooked and chopped fine ornament with figures cut from slices of boiled beets fill in the spaces around the designs with capers and garnish with green celery leaves and white stalks of celery fringed sardine salad lay the sardines upon soft paper that they may be freed from oil scrape off the skin and remove the bones squeeze over them a little lemon juice arrange upon a bed of crisp lettuce leaves or upon shredded lettuce and dress with either french or mayonnaise dressing garnish with hard-boiled eggs cut in slices sardine salad number two arrange a pint of cold cooked fish flaked on a bed of lettuce leaves and cover with sardine dressing carefully split six selected sardines remove the bones and arrange the halves on the top of the salad with the heads at the centre garnish with slices of lemon sardine and egg salad skin and bone a dozen sardines and put them in a mortar remove the shells from an equal number of hard-boiled eggs and cut them into halves crosswise so as to form cups with pointed edges put the yolks into the mortar with the sardines add a tablespoonful or less of chopped parsley a dash of pepper and salt and work to a smooth paste moisten with salad dressing and season to taste with salt and pepper cut a thin slice from the ends of the egg cups that they may be set upright on the serving dish and fill with the mixture making it round on the top like a whole yolk arrange these on a bed of watercress or shredded lettuce and sprinkle plentifully with french dressing lobster salad cut lobster meat in dice and marinate with french dressing keep on ice until ready to serve then drain carefully make cups of the inside leaves of lettuce put a spoonful of the lobster meat in the centre of each cup and press mayonnaise dressing through a pastry bag with star tube attached on the top of the lobster in each nest or arrange the lobster in a mound on a bed of lettuce leaves and mask the mound with mayonnaise finish the center with a little bouquet of the heart leaves of lettuce sift dry coral in a circle about it and below that arrange circles of sifted yolk or chopped white of egg alternately with the coral garnish with the fans and feelers of the lobster or arrange as before 
then finish the centre with a bouquet of heart leaves of lettuce and the head of the lobster garnish with stars of mayonnaise and fans from the tail lobster salad number two remove the flesh carefully from the shell of a lobster so as to keep the shell of body and tail intact wash and dry the shell and arrange on a bed of lettuce leaves marinate the flesh cut into cubes with french dressing after an hour drain mix with an equal quantity of shredded lettuce and replace in the shell garnish with mayonnaise and the lobster coral dry the coral thoroughly after which it may be passed readily through a sieve lobster salad number three ingredients two good-sized lobsters lettuce mayonnaise or sauce tartare lobster cutlets two tablespoonfuls of butter one-third a cup of flour salt and paprika one cup of milk lobster coral one tablespoonful of butter one yolk of egg one teaspoonful of lemon juice two cups of lobster meat three cups of aspic jelly method make a white sauce of the butter flour seasonings and milk add the coral and butter after pounding until smooth in a mortar also the yolk of egg beaten and diluted with the lemon juice and the lobster meat chopped rather coarsely when cold shape into cutlets dust over with sifted coral and insert a bit of feeler or claw into the small end of each pour a little aspic into a dish and when it sets arrange the cutlets upon it a little distance apart pour over each a few spoonfuls of aspic and when set cover with more aspic when cold and very firm cut out the cutlets giving a border of aspic to each marinate the flesh of the other lobster cut into cubes with french dressing pile in a mound on a bed of lettuce leaves insert a tuft of leaves in the top and arrange the cutlets against the mound garnish with feelers and claws serve mayonnaise or sauce tartare with the salad lobster salad in ring of aspic set a ring mould in ice water in the bottom of the mould arrange pitted olives or pimolas an inch apart dip figures cut from slices of royal custard or from cooked carrot or turnip into liquid aspic and place them on the sides of the mould to which they will adhere dip large sized capers a larding needle or skewer is of assistance in this work in aspic and with them ornament the mould then fill with aspic and set aside to become fixed when ready to serve dip the mould in hot water and invert on a serving dish cut the meat from two two-pound lobsters into small cubes season with french dressing fill the open space in the aspic with the salad garnish the top with the feelers and delicate lettuce leaves and arrange a wreath of lettuce leaves around the aspic stamp out rounds of bread stamp again with the same cutter to form crescents spread delicately with butter and then with caviar seasoned with a few drops of lemon juice and dispose symmetrically on the lettuce mousseline of lobster as a salad chill timbal moulds in ice water dip thin slices of gherkins into half-set aspic and arrange them symmetrically against the sides of the moulds and brush over the decoration with aspic cut the claw meat of a two-pound lobster into small cubes chop fine and pound the remaining meat in a mortar then add to it the liver and fat and pass through a sieve there should be about one cup simmer the shell in water to cover half an hour beat the yolks of three eggs slightly with one-fourth a teaspoonful of salt and a dash of paprika add one cup of the lobster liquor very gradually and cook over hot water as a boiled custard remove from the fire and add one-fourth a package of gelatin softened in one-fourth a cup of cold lobster liquor or chicken stock strain over the sifted lobster meat and stir occasionally over ice water when it begins to set add the lobster dice and fold in carefully one cup of whipped cream turn the mixture into the decorated mould and when set turn out on to lettuce leaves decorate with the head feelers and claws of the lobster serve with french or mayonnaise dressing french dressing is preferable with so rich a mixture anchovy salad ingredients eight salted anchovies or twelve bottled anchovies four hard-boiled eggs one head of lettuce juice of half a small lemon french or mayonnaise dressing or sauce tartare method if salt anchovies are to be used 
soak them in cold water two hours then drain dry and remove skin and bones divide the flesh into small pieces and squeeze the lemon juice over them when ready to serve arrange the lettuce leaves upon a serving dish stalk ends at the centre cut the eggs in slices mix with the bits of anchovies and arrange upon the lettuce pour a french or mayonnaise dressing made with onion juice or a sauce tartare over the salad salad of lettuce bamboo sprouts and shrimps marinate a cup of shrimps broken in small pieces with three tablespoonfuls of oil one tablespoonful of lemon juice a dash of salt and pepper select the tender bamboo sprouts in a can and cut them into small pieces of the shape desired when ready to serve dress these with salt pepper oil and lemon juice use three measures of oil to one of acid begin with the oil continue mixing and adding oil until each piece is glossy then add the acid mix the prepared sprouts and the drained shrimps and turn them on to a bed of lettuce cut in narrow shreds and dressed with oil and acid decorate the salad with heart leaves of lettuce whole shrimps and hollow sections of bamboo cut in thin slices bluefish salad excellent separate the remains of a baked bluefish into flakes discarding skin and bones set aside covered until cold about an hour before serving sprinkle with salt and pepper and for a generous pint of fish the juice of a lemon when ready to serve dispose heart leaves of lettuce on the edge of a salad plate and turn the fish into the centre letting it come out over the stems of the lettuce leaves pour a boiled dressing over the top and spread evenly with a silver knife over the fish put a tablespoonful of chopped pickled beet at the stems of each group of leaves a ring of the beet near the top and figures cut from the beet between molded salmon salad use a pound of salmon fresh cooked or canned remove skin and bone and pick the flesh fine with a silver fork mix half a teaspoonful of salt a teaspoonful of sugar a teaspoonful of flour half a teaspoonful of mustard and a dash of paprika over these pour very gradually three-fourths a cup of hot milk and stir and cook over hot water ten minutes then add one-fourth a cup of hot vinegar and two tablespoonfuls of butter creamed and mixed with the beaten yolks of two eggs stir until the egg is set then add one level tablespoonful of granulated gelatin softened in one-fourth a cup of cold water and strain over the salmon mix thoroughly and turn into a mold when chilled served with cream salad dressing to which half a cucumber chopped fine and drained has been added reserve a part of the dressing omitting the cucumber and use with slices of cucumber as a garnish to prepare the cucumber pare with a handy slicer and cut from it a section three-fourths an inch thick pare this round and round very thin and roll loosely to form a cup dispose this on the top of the fish and fill with dressing use a pastry bag and two cut the rest of the cucumber in thin slices end of section eight